Yo, this is the ultimate odd girl summer drink. Look at that. Woo! Cheers. Ooh. Oh, wow, that's good. That is so fresh. Welcome to the cooking show. Cooking show. But yeah, today on the cooking show, uh, we shall do something fresh. It's summer, it's getting hot in here. Well, you're certainly doing your job today, Mr. Sun. Oh, rats. You know, since we're doing pasta, why not do a pasta salad? Perfect if you're gonna wanna bring it to a picnic, or if you wanna bring it to lunch, you know, or if you wanna bring it to the beach. And since we're talking outside, summer is there, I wanted to do a little garden tour, so pff, other lads from the future do the garden tour. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the garden. We're gonna do a little garden tour just to show you what's growing. On the first section, we got a bunch of herbs. We got vervain, we got parsley, we got a little bit of oregano. We got some thyme, some dill. And this is probably what I use the most. I think fresh herb in the garden is the most useful stuff. They all grow for the entirety of the summer and you can use them all around. And then I got some two new plants, I got some carry plant and I got some Thai basil that I'm doing it for the first time, look pretty good. Then we got the chili, it's pretty early for the chili but I still got some that are starting to grow so that look good. After that we got all the veggies, so we got a little cucumber that is coming, aubergine, we got some tomato and we got a bunch of lettuce, it's lettuce time. Again it's pretty early for tomatoes and stuff but they're still coming up. After that we got the berry, we got a strawberry, we got a little bit of blueberry, we got some berry that I don't even know name. Berry 2 are gonna be a little bit more later but it's still looking good and we got some rhubarb coming up it's gonna be amazing. Then we got the edible flower section we got lavender and all those flowers you can eat them. I love having edible flower they're just so much easy to plate and just to do stuff with them. Some of them are fragrant so it's always good. And look at the variation of color there's so much potential. Oh and we got the zucchini flower too that are ready. So this year we did another section of herb that get just all over the place. Like mint and sage that taking over the entire garden. We just put them in an isolated place so they don't take over everything. So that's why they're looking a little bit small but not to worry they're gonna grow great. Oh and we got a bunch of grapes that are gonna grow but it's still pretty early. And shout out to our rose that are looking freaking fantastic. Look at that beauty. Oh, hey Ludan. Hey, what's going on? How are you? Yeah. All right, so for our pasta, our pasta, we're gonna use the extruder. We're gonna do a, a, a nice shape, you know, a nice little shape, nothing too complicated. But we we have a little twist. We're gonna make a purple, purple pasta using some red cabbage. You know, it's all about the purple life. We're gonna extract the juice of this cabbage using our forces, our juicer, whatever fits your fits your strength. So yeah, for the pasta, okay, this one is more like um, ideology than a must follow the recipe. If you were doing antipasto yourself, you would get different stuff as leftover, you know? So yeah, first in this one, we're gonna put a little bit of charcuterie, cause you always get a little bit of charcuterie leftover with antipasto. So we got a little bit of prosciutto, we got some mortadelle, those are usually the two that I buy the most. So if, if it's like ham, salami or any type of charcuterie, you can still put it in the pasta salad, you know, there, it's not obligated to be the prosciutto and the mortadelle. You kind of work and they're all gonna work the same. They, they just have... Let's get... Next are your pickle or in all type of veggies, you know, like the olive, uh, I got some artichoke and I got some red pepper. Uh, if it's sun dried tomato, eggplant, a zucchini, or whatever, it all works together. Next, usually in an antipesto, maybe you get some cheese. So, right there, I got some mozzarella, the buffalo ball, and I got a little bit of parmesan. So, those are usually the cheese that I use. But if you got like whatever cheddar, blue cheese, or uh, even manchego cheese, whatever you got in the board, you can probably use it. Cheese are highly good in those little salad. As long as they're not too creamy, like I wouldn't probably not use ricotta. Probably would be a freaking, yeah, I mean you could, but weird, weird. You're, you're weird. Legit, there's bugs everywhere because of this light and because the door is open. 
And next, we got a little bit of pine nuts. If you got almond, pecan, it all works, you know. I use pine nuts. After that, you need to balance all this saltiness, harshness, and usually more soft texture. You want your veggie to be raw, to be crunchy, to be flavorful, to be soft in flavor, a little bit sweet and super fresh. So I got some green beans, I got some nice cherry tomato. So yeah, I got some basil, I got some oregano, parsley, uh, some like small arugula. It's still a little bit early for arugula, but I'm still taking it. And to top it all off, to so everything come together, a little bit of red wine vinegar, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and we're gonna be there. So yeah, pretty simple one. Um, in terms of, there's no cooking actually. Actually, there's zero cooking. You're probably gonna cook the pine nuts and the pasta. That, that's about it. So pretty simple on this fact. But if you want, you can crispy the prosciutto if you feel crazy. Actually, we might. Uh, should we? You guys kind of convince me, man. I'm gonna crispy this prosciutto. That's gonna be good. Are you guys ready? Because I'm not. All right, so first we're gonna make some cabbage juice. I'm using my juicer because it is just amazing and it's super easy to make juice. Just put the cabbage in there and there's gonna juice coming out. You don't need that much cabbage because you don't need that much juice and you get some nice purple juice. Next, we're gonna make the pasta. So I'm putting the semolina, I'm adding the purple juice until everything is nice and smooth and the dough is sticky. Once the dough is ready, we're gonna put it into our extruder. And then you let the extruder do the magic, slowly pulling out the little pasta and then you cut them. Nice and easy and you got some nice purple pasta. Look at that, man. That look freaking freaky, man. Woo. Purple noodle, man. First time I see that. All right, next we're gonna cook our pies nuts and our prosciutto. I put it in a 400 Fahrenheit oven until they're cooked and crispy. Then we're gonna cook our pasta until they're fully tender and we're gonna cool it down with cold water. And we're already on plating time. I got some olive oil with some red wine vinegar. I'm adding the herb, basil, oregano, and parsley. I'm adding the chopped olive, the chopped red pepper, the cherry tomato, a little bit of the artichoke, the, the green beans. And then I'm adding the pasta, which are cold. You don't want hot pasta in there. And then I'm putting some salt and pepper, mixing everything nicely. Then we're gonna add our meat. So we're gonna add our mortadelle and our crispy prosciutto. We're gonna top it with the arugula after that. And we finish with the cheese. So I'm putting the mozzarella ball and a crazy amount of parmesan, olive oil, salt and pepper, just to be fancy and boom, we got it. The most outrageous looking good pasta salad. I mean, this one is just freaking fresh. Perfect for lunch, man. You wanna bring that to a lunch, you're gonna be the star of the dinner. Amazing meal again. Nice, thank you. Yum, yum, yum. Mmm, that smells so good. There's only good thing in there. Nothing I don't want to eat right now. I just want to eat everything in there. I'll be honest, if I eat all of this, you know, people fat, uh, not a great idea for my diet. So let's just, let's just do a plate. Let's see what flavor await us. Mmm. Like there's no no word to describe this man. There's this is like dude there there's the antipesto, there's the freshness, there's a boom, and it's boom, 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 boom. Have you ever been into a box match? This is how it feel, man. I feel like a blow in the face of flavor. Well, welcome to Flavor Town. Key question of the day. You gotta do an activity between five activity. Okay? You gotta choose between those five activity. First one, going to roller coaster. On second one, water slide. Third one, uh, museum, you know, or like going museum or anything historical site, you know, that that should be pretty fun. Fourth one would be uh, going to the movie. The fifth one is going to like the biodome or like a zoo or whatever. I'm gonna be honest, I will say probably not roller coaster. I don't like heights. I don't like heights. So I mean, there, there there's some of them that are pretty chill, you know. Uh, I mean, I still I still roller coasters are not too bad for me, even though I don't like heights. Except except some of them are just like way too high, and I'm just like, oh fuck no, man. I still do them, but I regret it all along, and I don't enjoy it. So I, I'm not a. It, it wouldn't be the perfect activity. Let's just say that. I will say fourth one probably the movie. Surprisingly, I love movie. 
But going to a movie theater, I mean, it's fun with friends, you know, but it's not my favorite activity. I, I like to watch movies at home. I do my own food, do my, you know, it's, it's more of a chill moment where I just relax a little bit. Yeah, so third one, I will say probably water slide. I will say water slide are freaking amazing. The only problem with water slides, sometimes you wait too much, sometimes the line, it's say, same thing with actually roller coaster, freaking line, man. It is, it is unbearable and then you're just all wet and you, you hope you either got shade if it's freaking sunny or you, it's hot. Because if it's not hot, then water slide not chill. But again, water slide, there, there's some freaking cool. But, and again, I got a problem with heights. But in general, water slide are pretty fun. You know, I do like water slide. They're just like chill, relax. Second one would be like a biodome and like a, a zoo, but there's some zoo that are whack. You know, there's some zoo that I would never want to go because they're just they're just trash. But there's some really great zoo that the animal feel like in liberty and they got space, they are well taken care of, and it it it's pretty chill. And then uh, biodome are are usually pretty cool too. I don't know. It's it's kind of more fun activity for me. Uh, a little bit more knowledge. First one would be like museum or historical site. I'm a I'm a huge freaking nerd for history. Like j just for example, the, the YouTube channel that I watch the most is like a history channel King in general. It's literally the only, my number one watch YouTube. And this is why I usually talk a lot about history because I enjoy it, even though I'm, I'm kind of stupid. But yeah, all those activities are cool, man. So you can invite me on each of them. But what is your list? That is the real question. So yeah, th thank you all for st sticking around for this one. Um, hope you guys had a freaking blast. And if you don't do this dish, you're you, you lost, man. You lost on life. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I shall say to you, peace or war, you decide.